Hey everyone, when I started out as a developer, my or one of the first projects I did was an appointment software for a dental company. And the thing is, um, I didn't really know how cron jobs work, so um, I didn't know how to expire appointments after they had been held. And uh, cron jobs completely solve this problem with serverless functions, um, and they're completely free. You can pay for them, but the service I'm going to show you in this video, it's completely free, really easy to do. So I say we dive right in, take a look at how to configure cron jobs for serverless functions. Okay, so this is the application I'm going to use to demonstrate to you how cron jobs work with serverless functions. And yes, I know this is, uh, this is really ugly. I know, that's not the point. Um, the point is we have an application and we want to invalidate all um, appointments that are... Um, already done. So if we take a look at the database, we can see the date of the appointment. These are the two dates. We have um, a SQL database at CockroachDB and then we can see the dates here. So today is the 17th of December and this one is already in the past. So this appointment should already be expired. So that's why we have the status. Um, but Sir Donald III has his appointment in two days, so that one should still be active. Now, okay, we have this um, as our web application. And if we reload this, we can see both are still active. And that's not what we want. So if we navigate to the API route of API, and then slash invalidate expired, we can see what happens. So um, we get back one expired. So we are just returning... Um, from the back end, um, was it this one? All the ones that are expired. So we are looking for them in the database. And then we are setting the status to expired and returning them. And I can make the code a bit larger for you. Uh, so we get the expired back. And if we go back into the front end and reload the page, we can see. Okay, by calling this API route, we have invalidated the expired um, appointments. So exactly what we want. The thing is, how do we do this automatically? So um, it's not user-based, but we are invalidating the appointments, for example, every 15 minutes or every one minute. That is entirely possible. And in fact, that is uh, really easy and completely free. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so let's refresh the database and change the status back to active for, for Bob Johnson. There we go. If we take a look at our application, which is hosted on Vercel, by the way, um, that's why we have the serverless functions running through Next.js in this case. Um, we have both active again. And now let's go into cron-job.org. I'm going to go to the dashboard here. And after you sign up, this is completely free, by the way. You can make an account. This won't cost you anything. Now, you can also do this, for example, with um, Upstash. We could also do this if we go into the... Um, console and then into QStash, so that would work. Uh, we could also have a cron job in here, but um, as you can see, there are only 500 re requests a day that we can make. And uh, in this one, we can do it completely for free. So how cool is that? We can create a new cron job. Let's call it um, invalidate expired appointments. And then in here, we're going to give it the URL that we wanted to go to to invalidate our expired um, appointments. So we paste the route right here. Now, um, this is the route I've previously shown you in Next.js. You can have it in the API folder and then just name it uh, whatever you want. And then this is the URL of the API. So your project slash API slash whatever this route right here is called. So invalidate expired in my case. That's why I can see it here. But wherever you are hosting your serverless functions, that would go right here. And then let's say we want it every minute just so i can demonstrate to you that it works um uh, without having to wait too long but you could have uh, every two minutes five minutes 10 minutes 15 30 and 60 or um every day at a certain point or every you know um, x day of the month every um year even so there are a lot of um options you have and you could also make a custom cron tab expression um if your use case um is not listed here, which it will probably be. You, you've got a couple of options um, down here, and you've also got advanced options. For example, um, in my case, having um, authentication or authorization makes no sense, right? We don't care who goes to that URL. 
um, as long as we invalidate the data, everything is fine. However, if your cron job requires um, authentication, um, I think um, authorization would be more fitting, but uh, you can have a username, a password, custom headers. Um, for example, you could have one uh, secret key in your environment variables in your project, and then have the um, uh, give that as a header as well, and thereby um, authenticate or authorize the uh, cron job. And that way you can verify that this website is actually making the request. You can have the um, time zones, and then we don't care about the last option. So this is pretty much it. Uh, we can just click create, and that will create the cron job. And as you can see right now, it's 3.58 p.m. And the next one is gonna run at 3.59 p.m. And we can also see that if we go to history. So next one is scheduled for next minute. So let's read out the page. We can see both are active and um, it's scheduled every minute. And these are only the next three that are gonna run, but it will just continue running after that. Um, so no worries. And um, whenever this time switches, it will take like uh, like one to five seconds, I'd say, about that time period for this cron job to actually run. So the way this works under the hood, the cron job is that they have an SQL database and they're making simultaneous requests, um, about 30,000 per minute, which is uh, pretty crazy, um, to every cron job that is listed in their database for this specific time. So as you can see, the time changed, so we can also revisit the history. Um, but we can see um, that is not unusual that in the first minute it doesn't run. I've had the same uh, when I tried this out beforehand. Um, so first minute didn't run, but after that it worked just fine. So let's give it one more minute and then at exactly 4 p.m. it should start with the cron job. And then as you can see here, there are no changes yet, but in one minute there will be um, and then um, the status will be expired. So let's give it one minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's exactly four and hold up, it still hasn't. Okay, so we have one enabled. Oh, we don't want this. Um, but if we go to the history, it still did not run. No, it did run. Okay, it just didn't show in the console. That's weird. Um, but it did run. Oh, and here you can see um, how many cron jobs there currently are. So 2.3 million, which is pretty crazy. Um, and as you can see, there's um, always a spike at the full hour and the 15 minute marks. Then uh, in between there are, you know, the one minute cron jobs, um, but it, it worked. So at every minute now, it navigates to this page, uh, to the API route we've defined, um, this one right here, in which we um, get all the, uh, let me enable that, in which we get all the expired ones, um, change them to expired and return them, which doesn't really um, matter that much, like returning them, we don't care about the uh, event, but then in the actual appointments, whenever we get all the appointments and return them, the status will be correct and will be returned to the front end. I can remove some of the debugging stuff I'd had here for earlier. Um, so we are getting the appointments, if the answer is not okay, we're gonna throw an error and else we're just gonna return it to the um, front end, which is in Next.js 13, by the way. That's why we can have the async, but it doesn't really matter that we're in Next.js. Um, you can do this um, with any API route that is uh, serverless. It doesn't have to be Next.js. doesn't even have to be Vercel. You just need to deploy it somewhere and then paste the URL into your um, cron job that you can have right um, here. That's where the API route goes. Um, you can check out some of the options and how um, often you want to run it. And that's pretty much it. Um, this will make sure your cron jobs run every minute. So um, if we can see that, yeah. Okay, so it ran at uh, 4, 18 p.m. at 4, 4, 1, and then 4 um, seconds. That's pretty cool. It will make sure it will run every time. Um, you can see the jitter here. So in this case, there was a lot of jitter because it was 4 p.m. And if you run a cron job at a full hour, then you can expect a way longer jitter because more people are running their cron job at the exact same time, whereas um, not as many people are running it every minute like we are right now, just for demonstration purposes. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you follow the steps, you've got your cron job set up. I wish you a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of use cases for this. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.